last time on Cartoon Corner, my boy and Obnoxious got caught in a huge explosion, and while they were absent, I took over the show and reviewed the drawn together movie the movie, which you should watch right now. I'm serious, watch it right now. If you don't, I'll have rats feast on your pirates! <laughs> oh, I'm just joking. Not really, of course. But let's find out what actually happened to Wyboy the Noxious. Right now! that you screwed up today. Firstly, making that little robot that almost killed us. Hey, I have a history of screwing up, so I can't be faulted for that. Next, saving us by teleporting to a different dimension, which you never told me that you could do. What? I'm shy about my powers. Is that really my fault? And now, after we teleported to the putrid brown dimension, you're telling me that we can't leave because you can't teleport us back home. Sorry, my powers are convenience based. Oh, and there's the one other issue of you having ended up fused in my freaking hand. Oh, okay, continue. Things can possibly get any worse. <gasps> hey, my name is Smolder the Dragon. <gasps> wait, wait, are you White Boy? <gasps> Could you review something for me, please? <laughs> he fell down. Hey everybody and welcome back to Cartoon Corner, this time taking place in Universe Brown. With obnoxious fused on my freaking hand. And now I'm just doing a review to hold off going completely insane, hopefully. And I got my number one fan here from another dimension who's a dragon. So what am I reviewing, Smolder? <sighs> You're reviewing Crash Canyon, my boy. What? <gasps> you mean the really terrible cartoon? Yeah, it is, but why would we give a view it because he is awesome, right? Right. But before we crash into Crash Canyon, let's go over a few interesting tidbits. Basically, all you need to know is that the head writer, Joel Cohen, the writer of the Mostly So-So episode of The Simpsons, pitted Crash Canyon against The Simpsons, Family Guy, American Dead, and The Cleveland Show, and Crash Canyon lost to all four, stopping its episodes at number 13. 13 is starting to become the magical number of this show, isn't it? So, does Crash Canyon crash and burn? Yes. But let's find out how in... Crash Canyon. Let's first talk opening and how this just blows. Forget the art style for now, because that gets a rent all for itself. Just listen. Hello, can you go? Well, now you know. The family drives a canoe and is down the next stop street drop will tear. There's no escape, lads, bad luck, so settle in. Yes, Dad! In Crash Canyon. Oh, sweet home! Scream and yell and have a spasm, mix 
makes no difference to the castle. Oh. Canyon. Oh, how die this the most fruit and tootinous cow cart violating hick songs I ever heard in my whole life. Yeehaw! <sighs> the melodies of the singers clash between each other throughout the song, making the song sound disjointed and lacking a better term. Hick! So first impressions make you want to go swimming in a septic tank. But hey, a theme song isn't that important, right? Hey, wait, boy, can we listen to the DuckTale theme? Of course, Mulder, of course. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. So how does the actual show fare? Is it any good? Well, the animation is flash-based crap. The crap that entails just bland animation movement, really forgettable-looking scenery, settings, and characters, and lazy looping animation. So mellow, I wanna punch them in the yellow. I wanna punch a rainbow. I wanna punch a rainbow. Let's go rainbow. Let's go rainbow. Trying to make different animations is hard. But if you want to know if this series is for you, then all you have to do is watch the pilot episode because everything that's horrible about this show is in it. The pilot starts off with our four main characters, Norman, Sheila, Roxy, and Jake, setting up to go on a cross-country trip. Oh boy, now we get to play our favorite game here on Cartoon Corner. Guess that ripper! <laughs> Okay, time for the first round, and this one's an easy one. Come on, Wendell family! It's vacation time! And we're already almost through the first part of the schedule! <laughs> Is it almost in but as a nerd? <laughs> Ooh, yay! Oh, well that was an easy one. Here's a trickier one. Oh, if I ever see them again, I'll choke them with their scarves! Choke them till their earrings pop out! <laughs> Is it always whipping with King Tank and Mini Face? Yay! But now we've made it to the Triple Lightning Run, and this is for you folks at home. Who do these characters rep off? Congratulations! You won! A copyright claims lawsuit! Not since Video Ben Kundo have we seen plagiarism this obvious. Every one of the main characters and most of the side characters is just a ripoff of a character from an even more popular show. American Dad, Family Guy, and The Simpsons. And The Cleveland Show, but it's just, just Family Guy again. The only thing that truly distinguishes these characters from their much more popular counterparts is that their counterparts are much more popular. And for good reason, it's because these characters are horrible, horrible, mean-spirited assholes. And falling into the open season character trap by having only one joke for all of them. Well, except for one, but let's save him for last. Oh, uh, before we go back to see where the Wendells are going on their cross-country trip across Canada, Let's go on another little tangent and talk about Joel Cohen being so proud of his Canadian jokes. Yes, Cohen is proud to say he and his other writers place in a bunch of jokes for us Canucks so that Canadians can get a little more enjoyment out of the show. And now, the monumentous height that these Canadian jokes go to. <coughs> you get it? It's a Canadian! <laughs> That's a reference, not a joke. Cohen, doesn't it make more sense to write jokes that everyone will relate to, rather than needlessly limiting your audience by taking clumsy jabs at Canadian stereotypes? and only Canadian stereotypes, that quite ironically, you don't have a grasp of. These Canadian jokes are references. All of them are references. 
all the other jokes are from the other characters. Which, if you don't remember, all only have one punchline to them. Oh, but that's not their worst humor offense. Not only does the show blatantly rip off characters, but they go as far as the rip off Family Guy's cutaway gags. I'm totally serious. They're blatantly, blatantly cutaway gags ripped off in the exact fashion that Family Guy would have done them. Just watch one. It's not all my fault. You guys distracted me with your complaining, and some blame has to go to gravity. This isn't the first time I've clashed with it and lost. Oh, my shirt! Oh, my spleen! Unbelievable! And that's not even the worst part! They screw it up half the time! One of the easiest jokes that Seth has came up with, and they screwed up on multiple occasions. How do they do that? Well... A regular cutaway lasts for about 10 to 15 seconds, but not Crash Canyon. Oh no, they are so funny, we have to linger on jokes for 40 seconds or higher. Sure, Family Guy had some longer cutaway gags sometimes, but a vast majority are only 10 seconds. Why? Because cutaways are supposed to be quick little segue jokes, not jokes you throw in willy-nilly because your characters can't hold a scene up by themselves. Because again, they only have one punchline to them. <sighs> okay, back on track. The windows are about to head up, but uh-oh, Norma's an extra travel book. Norman, why is there an extra travel mug? Man, that is some good gravy. So excited you joined us, Vernon. It wouldn't be a family trip without Norm's third cousin, who grabbed my butt at Aunt Carol's funeral. Yes, I remember the last time my father brought along his third cousin who groped his wife's ass. It was right before he beat him up for groping his wife's ass. So the windows finally go on their hilarious Canadian road trip until the family has had enough of Norm's boring personality. Mm -hmm. I can relate. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it's been a bit slow till now, but wait till we get to the- Hey everyone, focus on the side, there's gonna be an animation fail! We've got a mystery on our hands. <laughs> no! Look out! Oh yeah! I knew they would fail with that! Uh. Who really cares? It's just a stupid sign. Well, I do. It's a finished product, and that's such a simple mistake. Dude, it's pretty sad for you to pick up on those things. Shut up! Oh yeah, then they fall off the cliff, but nobody really cares about that. Well, we finally make it to Crash Canyon, and the windows find that it's completely inescapable, with unconnable walls and no paths in or out, except for the hard way down. So it's kind of like Gilligan's Island? Sprinkled with a little bit of Lost. So anyway, guess what else they find in the canyon? Can ye? No. They find poor token stereotypes that all crashed in the canyon sometime in the past. But actually seeing how these characters crashed in the canyon, the show finds isn't interesting at all. So their backstory is mostly swept under the rug. Oh, I rather want you can ye. Me too, but we're stuck with these people. A NASA pilot and his monkey. Picture all the meathead characters that Patrick Warburton played over the years. Rolled with the one annoying asswipe. Then there's a, a ventriloquist, a rock star, an old lady with a bear, a hick family. Ugh. God, why am I trying so hard? I don't remember any of their names. And again, it's because of the open season factor I'm calling it now, where these characters affect very little in the grand scheme of the show, and their roles boil down to saying their one joke and standing around complaining. Oh, but wait, there is actually one family that I can't remember the name of. The Clevelands! No, I'm not correcting myself. So the Clevelands bring three things to this show. 
ripping off Family Guy's Meg punching bag joke. We have hope she can lead a normal life. <gasps> you opened the door! Is it my birthday? Snootiness and the quote hilarious incest humor. We also have an older son, Royce. Isn't he gorgeous? Any woman's fantasy. If I was ten years younger and not his mother. Smolder, are you <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's her son! But it's not as bad as the other joke that they got of two brothers locking lips. I guess it's plan B. <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to take this seriously, but ew! When this is on rat rape levels of disgusting. Now, I would go on into the fact that the structure of the show is flawed in every meaning of the word, but Cohen has stated that his writers had realized that making their show entirely about the characters escaping would get very old after a while. So, they wanted to balance the story more by adding in more storylines of them living in the canyon to keep things fresh. Well, you didn't do that! By fresh, do you mean stagnating by doing the exact same thing you wanted to avoid? By making the show all about them just living in the canyon? You pointed out the problem with your series and basically just reversed what you were going to do in the first place! Most of the episodes have the two-story structure, which is the norm for these type of shows, like Family Guy. But here, there really isn't any variation on the stories. And it just grows tedious. It even grows confusing character-wise. Why would these people not spend the greater amount of their time dedicated to escaping? Rather than just having dances, praising a false messiah, ripping off the outdoor golf idea from Lost. God damn, this is infuriating. And I'm not even on Sheila yet. These arrogant, vapid, psychotic, immature, bossy, naggy, moronic, controlling, emotionally insecure, and a desperate sack of petrified crap. And that description I came up with before she landed in the frickin' canyon. She is just a mean-spirited character. No fun can be had with her at all. Nothing. All I feel when I see her is rage that completely causes all the characters besides her to disappear in her mean-spirited verbal diarrhea. So she gets the golden crown of worst character in this series. Congrats. You suck. So, if you want a visual representation of what I think of this series, then picture this. Start with thinking of the human centipede. Now replace all the people in the human centipede with all the property that Crash Canyon rips off, with Simpsons at the very front. Now imagine all the cliche crap that these shows do going right into Crash Canyon at the very end. There's only one major difference. Crash Canyon has a cork in its ass, preventing it to remove its repulsive negative atmosphere created by its mean-spirited characters and boring storylines. Oh, and also a magic old drawings of Peter Griffin at the game taped to the side that was drawn by stupid six-year-olds. And top it off with a couple of kids making out on top of it. And that, my friends, is what Crash Canyon is. Enjoy. Uh, wow, why boy, that was so cool. Thanks, Smolder, but now I got nothing else to do but starve, apparently. It was neat and nauseous. What the, what the hell? Wait a minute! Is that an elastic band? Well, uh... I kind of liked uh, being this close to you for an entire review, and I uh, didn't want to break us up. You've got to be kidding me! <laughs> Wait! 
Smolder, I did the review. I'm going home. Do you know I came with you? Why would I want an interdimensional dragon living in my house? Mm. Oh, fine. <laughs> Smolder, welcome to the team. <laughs>